In the final quarter of 2015, 3 released their so-called Super Voice service, which allowed users with certain devices in certain areas to make calls, text and use data on the 800 megahertz band instead of their usual much higher frequency bands. This basically leads to increased coverage, especially indoors. However, 3 system came with a number of complexities such as requiring the right device, but also the way they prioritised the 800 megahertz super voice meant that many people did not see it when it was necessarily beneficial to. So the 800 megahertz in 3's case was set below the priority of the 3G2100 layer. This was designed to prevent the 4G800 from being swamped with too many users. However, what it meant was that users who were on a very weak and unusable 3G signal, their devices would camp on 3G instead of using the much more reliable and faster 4G layer. However, in the recent kind of days, weeks, EE's been rapidly rolling out and enabling their 800 megahertz 4G as well. And EE is doing it much, much better. So EE enables all 4G capable devices to see the 4G 800 band. So you don't need one with a specific ROM and specific software and specific hardware to connect to the 800 megahertz band. Any 4G device can do it. Even my 3 ROMed S5 and my first generation Moto G which doesn't support Volte or anything as sophisticated as that. Also the 4G800 is above the priority of 3G2100. So that means that if you're in an area with 3G2100 and also 4G800 the device will go on 4G800. Now the 4G800 priority is below that of 4G1800 and 4G2600 because those two bands have more capacity. However, having the three 4G bands and the 800 sat between the sort of high capacity 4G bands and the 3G means that you can end up seeing 4G basically the entire time because in most areas, EE's got 4G1800 now because that's their base 4G layer. However, in some areas that might be a bit, a little bit weak due to buildings, lots of trees for example. And in that case, instead of falling to 3G, you get 4G800 instead. So, certainly in some of my travels, I've seen very little 3G now because of that 4G800 layer. However, of course, if you're making calls or texts on a non volty handset, it will use circuit switch 4 bats, the call will go on 2G or 3G. So in that situation, if you made a call, the phone would drop to 2G or 3G. However, if you had a Volte capable handset, it would then just carry the call over the 4G band. Also, EE supports Volte on all their 4G bands, so 800, 1800 and 2600, whereas 3 only appears to do it on their 800 and not their 1800. So EE's is very much smoother. So, how is it best to go about recognising if the 800 megahertz is deployed in your area? So, in terms of establishing whether a local mast is wired for 800, and obviously if it's wired for 800 it's likely to broadcast it at some point, the most accurate way is to look for green cable tags, because green cable tags don't mean anything other than 800 megahertz for either E or 3. Now, when I say E or 3, from what I've seen, 800 megahertz 4G is either done for just EE or it's done for 3 and EE. So if you come across a, a mast with green tags on the cables, it will most likely be carrying EE 800 megahertz either now or pretty soon. However, just because one of the operators is broadcasting 800 on say an EE and 3 one, doesn't mean that the other is at that point. So I've come across one or two where 3 is pretty clearly broadcasting 800 right now, but EE is not, or at least doesn't appear to from me as a consumer perspective. So, and especially with monopoles, I've seen a G-Preserve 
I've seen a triple band monopole and it's carrying 3800 with a 3800 cabinet but no signs of E800 yet however I do believe that come the future E will deploy 800 at that site so in other words it will be carrying 3 and E800 because that's what I've seen on say some tower and building macro sites however I'm not 100% certain or guarantee that if you can't see the cable tags because admittedly they're quite small then you can look at the master amplifiers on the towers because for 800 megahertz they tend to be quite large compared to the 1820 100 ones and also in some masts they reuse the old master amplifiers so the 800 ones are both bigger and also sort of much wider and newer looking as well in terms of monopoles where you can't actually see the cable tags the best thing to do is look for a very large shroud because they'll be using triple input triple band panels with a low band input in them so they're quite large panels I mean three of them means big shroud and this seems to generally lead to a Hutchinson Jupiter monopole which is which you'll remember is very common on Vodafone for no two masks because they also have low and high band spectrum in use so then you have to look at the cabinets below it so if you've got a Hutchinson Jupiter monopole and there's say a BTS 3900A cabinet which is sort of E's favourite it seems for 1800 mega 2G 4G then the chances are that monopole is also going to carry 800 at some point if it isn't already although the BTS 3900A will only be carrying the 1800 mega 2G 4G so there will be other cabinets on site, on site to provide power the 3G 2100 as well as the 800 megahertz. I'm just saying to look out for the BTS 3900 so that you can work out that the monopole is an E slash 3 one as opposed to a Vodafone slash O2 one. It will need other cabinets or a modification of the cabinets in order to provide that 800 megahertz later on or in that state. Now there is also a cabinet that looks kind of like 1.5 BTS 3900s. So it's got the 1800 2G 4G sort of on the one part and then the 0.5 is at the 800 megahertz transmitters and that is something to look out for if you see it then that's probably going to be carrying 800 megahertz. In terms of recognising it on the phone the best thing to do is to use field test mode if that's available for the device and then that will display band 20 with a bandwidth of 5 megahertz because EE only has 5 megahertz on the 800 megahertz band and the 800 megahertz band is called band 20. Oh, if you don't have field test mode and you're on Android there's an app called GNet Track and the cell ID of that indicates the band so 1, 2 and 3 is 8, 1800, 6, 7, 8 is 2600 and C means like 12, 13, 14 certainly 12 and I think 13 or 800 so anything that's not 1, 2, 3, 4 so anything that's not 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8 is probably 800 megahertz if it's not, if you're not, if you're on 3G though the cell ID will go all messy so this is only referred to if you're on 4G so this 4G800 though does assist them with the emergency services network because of course EE won that and the 800 megahertz then provides the ability to provide much further reaching coverage from towers and certainly they'll have a pretty much nationwide 4G800 footprint by the time that ESN comes out and it already seems that they're making very significant headway in that regard. So um, thanks for watching, if you've got any questions about E's 800 megahertz sort of deployment and what to look out for let me know in the comments below otherwise i'll see you on the next video